Hello again, New Life Church children and friends who are joining us from all over the world. It is a joy to once again be back with you to continue our story from where? The Biggest Story with Kevin, written by Kevin DeYoung. And so as we get into our chapters today, we are going to be doing two chapters. We are doing, yes, Ulrich, we're going to do chapter seven and chapter eight today. Um, and I want you to listen up closely because the, the big part of the story is in these chapters. I want you to listen out how God is fulfilling his promise, how he is being faithful to his people. So let's get in to chapter seven and let's read together. Believe it or not, God's promises hadn't gone anywhere. Do you remember last, the last chapter? We ended on that scary picture with Israel being judged by God. But believe it or not, God's promises hadn't gone anywhere. In fact, God kept on making more promises all the time. God promised that the snake crusher, who was Abraham's child, Judah's lion, David's son, would come from Bethlehem. God promised he would be born of a virgin. God promised a messenger to prepare the way. God promised that the deliverer would die and live again and be a light to the nations. God promised lots of amazing things. And we find those promises in the Old Testament in our Bible. And all those promises were being made even before the snake crusher had come. But Israel was too busy disobeying God's commands and ignored God's warnings, uh, warnings to notice. God sent miraculous prophets. So those were the people who spoke on behalf of God, the prophets, like Elijah and Elisha, and rebuking prophets like Amos and Malachi, and sad prophets like Jeremiah, and good news prophets like Isaiah. It didn't matter which ones God sent or how many. Why? Because the people never listened. Well, not for very long anyway. And so one day it happened. God stopped sending the prophets. No more warnings. No more direction. No more word from the Lord. Only silence for 400 years. That's a long time for the Lord to be quiet, wasn't it? God had sent prophets, prophets, priests, and kings. He started out with Adam and started over with Noah. He chose Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He gave Moses the law. He sent Israel judges. He raised up deliverers. He conquered enemies. He provided sacrifices. He lived among his people in a tent and then in a temple. God gave them, his people, every opportunity and 10,000 chances but still sin and the serpent seemed to be winning. Until all of a sudden they lost. How on earth did that happen? And so we're going to go on to chapter 8 to see how was sin and Satan defeated. Let's see. After all these downs, and not too many ups. We come to a manger in the little town of Bethlehem. You see our picture there. I know, exa I know you guys know exactly what we're talking about. Because we're almost at December, aren't we? And it's the Christmas story. This is when we meet the new Adam. The child of Abraham. The son of David. It's with the stinky shepherds and the singing angels where we see 
the real deliverer, the real judge, and the real conqueror. No one understood it completely at the time. But when Mary pushed out that baby, God pushed into the world the long-expected true prophet, priest, and king. God gave his people a new law, a new temple, a new sacrifice, and best of all, he gave his people a new beginning, just as he promised. Of course, some things were different, were different than people had expected. The stable with the animals and the scandal with unmarried Mary was surprising to most folks. The miracles were remarkable. The teaching was unlike anything anyone had ever heard. The bumbling hand band of picked hand-picked disciples. That was also curious. But the biggest surprise to everyone was that the chosen one of God, the one that the Old Testament had told us about, was chosen by God to die. It, didn't, it just didn't seem right that the one destined to crush the serpent would be crushed himself. So when Jesus, the Christ, the Son of the living God, died on the cross that Friday afternoon, it seemed a shocking evil beyond belief. And children, it was the worst thing that had ever happened in the world was when Jesus died and was crucified. But, I love that word, don't you? But, it was also the best thing that ever happened in the world. Just as we would expect from God, and just as God had planned it. We break promises, so God keeps them, keeps his we run from God, so he comes to us. We suffer from sin, so the Savior suffered for us. Our story is the story of God doing what we couldn't do in order to make up for us doing what we shouldn't. The Christ suffered for our sins that we might share in his sinlessness. And so deliverers are born to die. Things fall apart so they can come together. God kicked his own people out of paradise and then does whatever it takes to bring them back again. Children, do you understand that God's promise was Jesus coming? And part of that promise was that he had to die for our sins so that he could be the snake crusher. We can rejoice that God was faithful to his promise and that, who did he send for us? He sent Jesus. So let's ask ourselves those two questions. One, who is our story about today? And what happened? Well, it was about God, but also God who sent Jesus so that he could be born and then he could die. But God was doing this, why? Because he had a plan to fulfill the promise that he had made way back in our first chapter in the book of Genesis. Now we know December is coming and that is Christmas and we're going to talk more about who Jesus is. But children, I want you to hear how faithful our God is continuing to be by sending Jesus. And we heard about that beautifully today in the message as well, that he has come to establish his kingdom. And you know what? There is an invitation for us to be part of that kingdom by accepting the work of what Jesus has done on the cross for us. And that was what we did in What is the Gospel? So children, I hope you are hearing and understanding what we are, we are reading today. And it really is the biggest story that anyone could ever know or hear. So let's send some love. We love you, children. 
And we pray that you are having a blessed week and that this truth would give you joy. Blessings. Lots of love.